different and confidant and the, one of the greatest guitar players you have ever met in your entire life is my good friend. Oh, Mr. come Steve, on, please. <laughs> Steve Lurk. <Lukather. laughs> hey, man, how's it going? Hey, excellent, Steve. Going very well. How are you keeping well? Oh, uh, well, you know, I had a little bus accident, man. It screwed up my shoulder, so I'm in repair right now, but uh, I'll be okay. No ways. When? What? When, 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 yeah, somebody cut us off on the bus as I was coming down the stairs, and I tore up my rotator cuff on my left arm, oh trying my. to save myself from, uh, you know, killing myself. Oh really. my God! When was that? Was that in in while you were in somewhere in Europe? I forget exactly what day it was, but it was a couple months ago. And I thought I pulled this pulled the muscle, but it was actually much worse. So oh I can God. play and everything like that's okay, but there's a lot of pain involved, so it's going to take me a little time to get that to together. Get back but I'll to be all right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's nice I got a little bit of time off at home with the kids here before the year gets nuts. I've already been out most of the, the first quarter of the year. I was on the road the whole time, so. Yeah, you've been now out. Now I'm just chilling out. You, you've, been, you've been out on the road with Toto. You've just come back from from being with Toto, haven't you? Yeah, we did, like, you know, Europe, uh, the Dubai Jazz Festival, and then right into uh, Japan. So that was about two months out. Oh, wow. It was really successful, really great. We had a blast, and... Uh, Band's killing it, and we're having a, you know, life is good right now. <laughs> That's amazing, you know, it's amazing. I've just been playing a couple of tracks from Toto, and um, it just, you know, the, the, one of the greatest albums you guys ever did, in my humble opinion, sir, is, is the one... What, uh, what songs you, what were you, what are you listening to, the new stuff? No, 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 some of the old, old uh, Absolutely Live, have you remember that album? It, well, I, was, you know, I haven't heard that in a thousand years. <laughs> I don't listen to my own stuff unless I got to relearn something. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I but mean, when you're working on an album, you listen really hard and under the microscope all the time. Yes. And then when it's mixed, you listen to it a bunch, and then you go, okay, I've, I've heard it now. You know? I've done that. <laughs> but I tell you what, it just brings back so many memories of, of, of great times, and I'm sure it's the same with everybody, you know, and when you, go, when you guys go out and play, you know, I mean, how do, how do you... Get your set list together. You've got such a huge catalog. Oh, you know, music. actually, we do. We, we all get together and we throw it against the wall. And you know, as there's some stuff we got to do. Okay, we put in one category. There's the hits that if we don't play them, people will lose their minds. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the ones that okay, what what did we play last time? What didn't? What haven't we played in a long time? And what can we add? Spice it up and. Uh, we try not to repeat ourselves too much, um, yeah. and also it balances out the set, you know, for vocally for Dave, myself, and Joe, and now Steve too. So, uh, you know, we try to keep it interesting. You know, some bands go out there and play the same fifteen songs every time, and yes. we try not to do that. And and a lot of your 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 uh, show is, I mean, you have a sort of format to your show, but do you? Diversify from that. I mean, you know, listen to your live DVDs and that. You know, you often get people to sing along, and is it like, you know, it happens on the night. Whatever happens, happens. You know, is, is that the way that you guys? Work? Yeah. Well, I mean, every audience is a little different, but you know, some things are very surprising. Like some of the deep cuts, the yeah. whole crowd starts singing along with. Yeah. Them. Okay, that one hit a nerve. <laughs> uh, so, and that's nice when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have, we have a lot of really, really cool. I hate to call them fans because it sounds so teenage, but I call them our friends or people that support us. Yes. Supporters. I'll use, yeah. I'll use the word support. The people that have always come out and really follow us and are really passionate about the band, mm. uh, they love all, they know everything. They know and then there's the casual yeah. fan who knows the hits and maybe a few other things, maybe has a couple of the albums, doesn't realize that we have like 15 albums out or something. I know. And, uh, you know, and then it's interesting because our catalog keeps selling after every tour. We get a lot of younger fans coming out, surprising, yeah. surprisingly enough, which is really kind of neat. And uh, we're just working as hard as we've ever worked, and we seem to be on an upward trajectory right now. That's amazing. And that's really nice. Yeah, that's a really absolutely. great feeling. And I think you it's... Know, we've, we're going to make it to our 40th anniversary in 2018. That's really... <laughs> it's hard to believe that we've been doing this for, you know, 40 years as a band. Oh, man. As that's... of next year, that's what will be the case. You know, we started wow. making our record in... Uh, a late summer 1977 so is that when you started out no, late summer yeah man we you know we were I was still a teenager when we were working on the first album I was 19 years old god amazing me and Steve me and Steve and Len Castro yeah. were the 19 year old punk asses you know? <laughs> brilliant brilliant and you've, you were all, you've always been from that part of the world Los Angeles that's been your home isn't it for many years LA yeah I'm like fifth generation yeah I have very strong roots in Los Angeles. As, as 
you know, there's good and bad parts of L.A., obviously. But, you know, I have it, I call it home. I live up in the hills, so it almost it feels like I'm out in the country, even though I'm in the middle of Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, I was I was there with a um, guy called Al Atkins once once upon a time, and um, and all the guys said, "Okay, listen, we got to go up and 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 get to the sign." He said, "What sign? This massive sign on the hill called Hollywood, you know?" Okay, right, so we, oh, yeah. <laughs> we took a drive up um, through Beverly Hills, and 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 we got horribly lost. So we ended up at a um, like a, sh a shopping stall somewhere, and there was a dude that. Had just had a had a, a massive fight with his. He was an agent for somebody. You know, somebody I don't know who he was. And anyway, he took us up to the sign, and it, it was just ballistic. You know, when you actually get there and you see how big the sign is, it's just um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that. It's another. I think world. they've blocked it off now. You know, you Have can't. They? It's not as easy to get to anymore. No. But such a rock and roll city you live in, my brother. We went to, is it called the Rainbow? The Rainbow Club? Yeah, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I've, I used to lose a lot of brain cells in that junk. <laughs> you know, it's clean living for me now, about seven years now. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah there, there, there were the lost years, yes, where they told me I had a great time. Okay. <laughs> Now let's talk about your your album, uh, your last album, Transition. That, that was really received so well in this part of the world. Oh, anyway. shit. Well, okay, man, that was a while back, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting ready. I'm starting to put my head around doing another one. Oh yes, please. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I worked real hard on those records. Yeah. I think the last three solo records were sort of somewhat of a trilogy by accident. Now I'm kind of into that cycle, and I want to do something a little different. Maybe uh, almost even more live in the studio like my second record Candyman was basically mostly live in the studio with vocal overdubs and a few things here and there but background vocals and stuff but uh, mm -hmm. you know get a bunch of guys in a room and play even a lot of the solos on that album are live so that'd be cool I think I want to try to do something a little bit more less uh, polished and produced yeah. Of course, I say that now. Who knows what's going to end up? <laughs> you know, I just want to play a little bit, man. I'm not like trying to write the proverbial hit single. So when you have those uh, handcuffs taken off, you can do a lot of different things. Yeah, I mean, it's it really. And Toto's still very healthy and very strong. Yes. And uh, you know, I plan on carrying on with it for, for you know for as long as the guys want to do it. You for know, sure. We're having a blast. Oh wow, man! We're yeah. really feeling good right now. I mean, we've been through so much shit. I mean, Jesus. Oh, People come and go, and people die. I mean, it's it's been really tragic in the last couple of years. We've lost so many friends and oh, brothers, and and also fellow musicians. I mean, this year alone has been devastating. With the okay. loss, you know, yeah, yeah. David, I mean, every every. I'm afraid every morning. I'm afraid to look up. You know, it's like I, I guess maybe it's because I'm getting older. Yeah. At 58 years old, and uh, a lot of my heroes are. I keep forgetting that you know it's all. Everybody grows up at the same time. It's, yeah. They're getting older now. We're losing a lot of our heroes. I mean, Ringo's going to be seventy-six. For God's oh my sake. God, really? And I'm I'm still working with Ringo. Strong work. Matter of fact, we just wrote a tune and recorded it for his new album. Yeah. And we're going out. I'm going out with him in June and also uh, probably October. I think. Do, do you think? Um, and then I'm doing Toto in between. So I mean, I'm on the road a lot. Yeah. Did, and did, matter of fact, I worked on a new song. He told me to write him a ballad. I wrote something pretty cool. So we'll see what happens. Hey, nice one. Can't wait to hear that. Do you think you'll, you'll ever come to the UK with 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 Ring? Oh yeah, I love the UK. Now we did the UK, um, you know, was it last year? And we'll, we'll be back 2018, absolutely. UK. I want to try to get out and play a little bit more than just like London. You know what I mean? London, oh, yeah. Manchester. Yeah. But uh, yeah. we'll be there for sure. And then you know, it's expanding. Things are looking up, and I think that we're you know we're doing good business. So the promoters are welcoming us back, and the fans certainly are. So. We'll yeah. be back for sure. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that just love everything that you do, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm talking to guys on that, you know, in, in, in the radio business and stuff like that. And we're just listening to, you know, your solo work, your work with Ringo, your work with Toto, your work with various musicians over the years has been amazing. Yeah, well, I'm also working on an autobiography right now with, uh, actually with a... Uh a writer from the UK, Paul Reese, used to be the editor of Q Magazine. Oh, wow, yeah. Oddly enough, uh, yeah. not, Q Magazine were never fans of me or Toto, but, and he felt, this guy's really cool, and he felt that we were actually, we've been unfairly portrayed in the mainstream rock press, you know, in the UK and certainly uh, in, the, in America, but it's sort of changing now, you know. 
You know, after 40 years, it's like, come on, guys. Are we really the worst band ever in history? No. Please, give it a rest, you know? <laughs> Whoever said that, I'll kill him. <laughs> no, man. I mean, like Rolling Stone, all these people. We always make the worst band of all time list. No way. It's good. That's oh, it. yeah. It's pretty funny, actually. And, uh, you know, there are, there are publications in the UK that won't even acknowledge we ever existed. Oh, well, no way. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Like New Music Express and... Uh, Mojo and all those kind of things. We don't exist in that. I'm aware. I mean, it's really funny. The rock. You talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, mean, I played with like over 75 people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Exactly. Yet our name or my name is not even in the database as ever existing as that's, a human being. That's that's ballistic. We need to change that, man. We just got to change that because that's not. Oh, wrong. you know what, man? I get enough pats on the back. I have a great career, man. I. I Really, I kind of laugh at it now. It's yeah. like, well, you know, whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> Obviously, we struck a nerve with somebody in a negative way yeah. in the in the press area, but the, the musicians, they got some, you know. Yeah, but do you need I'm, to I'm tell I'm not them. worried about that yeah. crap. I mean, you know, that was like, you know, early on, we were like baffled by it, but now after 40 years, I mean, they've already said everything negative they could possibly say, and we're still here, so. Yeah, it, that, I mean, I mean, if you just listen, if you just take one of your, any one of your DVDs, live DVDs, and look how many people are in the audience there, and, you know, it's a well, you know, that's where, that's where we win, because, yeah, you know, people yeah. don't care, people that like our music don't care what other people say. Exactly. We're one of those weird, under-the-radar bands, you know? Yeah, of course we have the, the big hit, Africa is like, you know, mm. has a life of its own. Yeah. And uh, it's a double-edged sword, it's great to have a song like that, but it's also, it doesn't really define us, like, every song that we do doesn't sound like Africa. That was no. kind of a weird album cut mm. that became this huge thing that keeps morphing every year you know? I mean, it's laughable but it's it's kind of cool it keeps us younger people kind of find us yeah. we just the EDM people have been using Africa to end their sex man we just did, as a matter of fact we just worked on a project yeah. last year with uh, um, these DJs and, and uh, EDM guys what's what's so not and Skrillex and we and we wrote in this piece and collaborated in the studio it hasn't come out yet but it was really interesting to see how they work, and they were interested to see how we work. And it was a really positive collaboration. I'm waiting to see what how they mix it and do all their, their thing to it. You know, it was really knocked out. Really nice people, too. Yeah, yeah. The EDM scene is really cool. I had a different viewpoint of where that was at. Yeah, sure. So when I got to hang out with, like, the highest levels of these guys, yeah. they're the nicest, most soulful people, man. They're, they're, they're not, like, posers yeah. at all. You no, know? They're no. really cool. They I was really impressed and, and knocked out. You know, I had their whole process. It's amazing. You know, I was in London about uh, two weeks ago, and... I was invited to go to, to uh, Virgin's Battleship, whatever it is, some massive building in London, and there was about, I don't know, 10, 20 people sitting in this room talking about the, the music industry, and, and one of the guys at the head of the table was a guy called Chris, or oh, I can't remember his surname, but his, his record company specializes in bass and... What they, drums and bass, they call it, drums and bass, and it's like rap <coughs> stuff, you know, and uh, we were talking about this, and, 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 and he brought one of his DJs in, and they were saying, well, this, it, the whole world has changed now, you know, this, all his, his artists actually record their stuff in their own bedrooms and send it to him, and he'll get like 20 well, songs. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's one fatal flaw of that, you can do that with that kind of music, but you sure as heck can't make... Dark Side of the Moon on your laptop. And you're living, <laughs> no. You know, I mean? you know, you're not going to make, you know, Peter Gabriel so no, on your laptop. You no, know, no, there's certain happen. things that we don't make records that way. I mean, we can work at home and we certainly do, but, yeah. you know, we go to Capitol and get the big drum sounds with expensive microphones. I mean, it does make a difference. I don't care what anybody It makes says. a big difference. You know, big. quality, I mean, expensive gear and vintage microphones, it, it, it just has a different feel to it, man. It does. It does. I mean, you, you, can, you, I mean can. you can make great music in your living room, but, you know, I still think that the quality and sonically and everything like that, it, it makes a difference to do it uh, the way we used to do it. You yeah, know? yeah. In a, in a proper studio with a proper environment. Yeah, with a proper engineer, yeah. you know, all, the, all that stuff. Yeah. Does it take the... I mean, I embrace, I embrace the new technology, don't get me wrong, yeah, but... Yeah. I, there's a certain thing that happens when you play in a real recording studio. Yeah, it's true. You know, it just has a different vibe to it. You know? It takes the pressure off the musician too, don't you think so? Like you can you can actually concentrate on your music more than worrying about if the bass is too loud or the whatever. Oh well, that, we we argue about that until fuck it, until death. <laughs> you, should, you know, we yeah. almost came to blows on the last record. Oh, God. 
Well, well, you know, it's like, you know, we're all very strong personalities. Understand, yes. we hadn't played a, made a record in almost 10 years. Dog. And when we got in the room again, you know, everybody's a solo artist and a producer and yeah. a songwriter in their own right. And we all have Different our own system. way of doing things. It's like, it's like six bulls and one cow, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody wants to fuck the cow. You can't all do it at the same time. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. It is like that, though, when when you get so many passionate and, and you know, really talented people together and asking them yeah. all to, to create one th creative, start getting six Van Goghs and saying, guys, come on, paint me one painting. You know? Yeah, well, that's pretty much what it was like. Yeah. It's like painting. It's like you know, playing live is like Formula One. Hmm. And and uh, in the studio, it's like painting like, a really huge mural, you know? Yeah. I and the mean, details, attention to detail. You step back, you look at it, you add color, you go, hmm, I can fix that, I don't like that. Or I really like that, let's move on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when you're playing live, you're running downhill, you know, downhill racer, full, yeah. full on. You know, yeah. if you make a mistake, you got to keep going. Yeah, because you're going to go back and fix it. <laughs> it's too late. Well, man, that, that the poor kid, Nick Jonas, man. Have yeah, you seen oh, that, this guy? Oh, <laughs> I feel really bad for him, really. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, he's in over his head. You know, he's, it sounds like a beginning guitar player. Mm. Obviously, that's where he's at, but... The brutality this kid's taking on the internet right oh, now is like, okay, awful. enough, enough. You beat him up enough, leave him alone, you know? Yeah, yeah. We've all, I listen, I've made horrendous mistakes live before, you know? Oh, me it's too. It's a bad oh. feeling. It's a bad feeling. You want it to go away fast. But thanks to the miracle of the internet, it can be there forever. <laughs> you know? Oh, my word. It can do indeed, yes. It's like, I, I never look at YouTube and stuff because I don't want to, I don't care who you are, the haters are there. Yeah. Nobody gets out alive. I mean, God.com has haters, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what, Luke? Fuck them all, mate. <laughs> really, truly, excuse my French, but uh, and that's the way I feel about it. You know, it's, you know, just, we, we do what we do, and that's the way we are. You don't like it, don't watch it. You know it, what, man? I got a 40-year career, man. I, I, I'm the luckiest man on earth. Yeah, I yeah. got to live the dream. Yeah. I'm living my dream, right and I still care. I've been pra I'm practicing my I practice all morning. You know? mm. I still love to play the guitar, and there's so much to learn. I still want to be get better at it, or at least refine what I know. And Even if it's just for me. I mean, there's, like, you know... The level of guitar playing these days, I mean, as far as technique, is just oh, staggering. It's yeah. laughable. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I mean, there is that, that cult is covered. You know, yeah. I don't need to be in that arena, you know. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I tried to do that, it was, I, I missed the boat, I think, you know. I mean, I got enough chops to get through for anything, but uh, really, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to mature a little bit more and be a little bit more, a little more restrained. I mean, you know. I think There's a little bit more to say than just full shred at all times. That's it, yeah. I mean, last time we chatted, we were in Leamington Spa, and um, I remember you saying, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to do play anti-fast. I'm trying to slow things down a bit. I just want to. Well, it's like my uh, life. I mean, it's, it's going by too quickly now. You know, yeah. it's funny when you're a kid, you can't wait to be 21. All of a sudden, when you hit 50, you're like, slow down, please. <laughs> Now I'm 50, I'll be 59 in October, and it's like, holy shit. No, oh, man. I'll be 59. You know, I'm losing a lot of my friends, man, and it's kind of scary. I'm super healthy now. But, yeah. but you know, I, I was pretty nuts for a long time. <laughs> uh, you know, it seemed the thing to do at the time. But you look back and go, oh, whatever. You know, it all leads you to today. Everything in the past is the past. You know? Yeah. But you are where you are right now, and, and to me, you've managed to... Yeah, you know, uh, I'm through it. I just, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying my life right now, and yeah. I'm savoring it. I got wonderful Excellent. kids, and, yeah. you know, I'm, 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 I'm just pushing straight ahead, man. You know, I'm, uh, and Trevor's doing so well, Luke, hey? Yeah, he's got a new, he's actually got a new thing coming out now. I'm really pretty excited about yeah. that. Yeah. He's got some so labels good. interested in him now. He's just finished uh, five songs. He must be so proud. And, uh, yeah. and uh, we're going to see what, where, where where he ends up, and hopefully he'll be on the road this time next year. God, can you believe it? I mean, how old is Trev now? He's 28. He's, he's the same age as my son. My he's done a lot of stuff. I mean, he does a lot of work in L.A., but, you know, under yeah. the radar stuff, you know, where he works on other people's stuff and writes on screen. Mm. But, you know, this is his thing, and this is really a great time for him. It's He's really ready to go to the next level, I think, you know. Yeah. I hope so. You know, he's been working damn hard at it. Yeah. 
I mean, oh, fingers crossed, man, that goes well. And he's releasing, yeah. he's releasing it's something. It's real, you know, it's real accessible stuff. He loves pop music. He loves, yeah. it's like power pop EDM is the okay. best way I can put it, you know. Yeah. But he plays great guitar, real tasty, you know. Right. He doesn't play like what you would think. Like, he's never shredded or tapped or anything like that. He's yeah. got a different thing. Well, a really great sense of chords and melody and interesting choice of notes, you know, which I think is really cool, you know. It's, it, to find him more than just another guy who learned all the tricks off the internet, which is what most people sound like. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I can remember you telling me, you know, the, the magic about playing a guitar is that you need to find your voice, and I can remember that, and, and it's stuck with me forever, you know, and so, uh, you know, instead of trying to... Be, well, then that's just trial and error, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, you still got, you know, there are no wrong notes. It's, no. your, it's, it's what they mean and how you get there, you know. Yeah. Hey, my bro, it's been lovely talking to you, Lou. Thank you so much yeah, for your man. time. Yeah, man, I wish you all the best, and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon, okay, mate? Yeah, for sure. Look after yourself, remember? All right, I'll talk to you then, man. I'm going to play out with uh, um, a real cool track from... What a gentleman, absolute legend, Mr. Stevie Lucifer.